Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and today we are going to do um, a tour of the Proven Winners Signature Garden here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, a Zone 8A. For those of you that have been faithful followers of Creekside, you know that we have uh, developed and created uh, this beautiful garden. I'm sorry, there's a hummingbird just right off to my side. I absolutely adore the hummingbirds. So they're going to the wygillas and the roses. If you don't have your hummingbird feeders out, get them out now. Okay, we're gonna go back to the, I can't miss up a good hummingbird, y'all. Um, the garden is, gosh, the plants in it, the shrubs, the perennials is less than, oh gosh, six, eight, definitely eight months old. We just got it developed, designed. Uh, I did the design. People were asking, you know, who did the design? I came up with the design. Jerry kind of, we worked together as a team. He kind of laid out and said, this is our area. And then from there, I went ahead and created the beds, the shapes, and all of that. Of course, it is filled with a lovely Proven Winners perennials, trees, shrubs, and annuals. We're really going to focus on the shrubs and the perennials today because, as you know, we are in transition time of getting all of the annuals in. So I'm going to talk about the annuals, but there are some great shrubs and perennials that I can't wait to share with you. Hopefully give you some ideas for your garden, um, even if you see a plant just one plant that you're like, that is the coolest plant. I love how it looks and I want to add it to my garden. That is my goal. Do uh, I expect everybody to have this, you know, really intricate, very high, high maintenance um, display garden in their yard? Absolutely not. Please keep in mind that this is a display garden for um, visitors, for our customers, for you sweet people, anybody that wants to come and walk these gardens, look at them. It is absolutely free. You can come when we're open, Wednesdays through Saturdays, nine to three, walk through and enjoy. Most of the shrubs and the perennials have name tags on them. I know that we're missing a couple of them. I'm gonna come back and make sure that everything is labeled so that when you come and visit, you're not left guessing, well, what is this plant? You'll know exactly what it is uh, in case you want to add it to your garden. We were here just the other day getting uh, the annuals planted. Of course, we have the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. That is the annual of the year. You were with Jerry and I as we uh, planted these and they are doing quite nicely. Nice dark green. Y'all, this is why we amend the soil with nice, you know, compost and your great biotone fertilizer. All that nice dark foliage, they are really starting to fill in. It's beginning to be hard to see, you know, the individual plants, which is what I want because the end goal is that it will completely fill this in. We have our first Wedgwood Blue. Look at that. Um, I just planted this. You know, you were with me the other day when we planted this. First one blooming. I'm using the Wedgwood Blue as a filler for this year while I am waiting on the Sprinter Boxwoods and the Little Lime Punches to reach their mature size. This way, the Angelona will, you know, fill it in, make it look that it's not so empty. And then, of course, <laughs> all the beautiful annuals. So this is the first annual planting for the summer season that we have put in here. Again, if you missed that video, go back and watch it. My goal here was to create a really colorful mixed garden that you can enjoy and <laughs> be inspired by. Maybe you haven't, you know, maybe you're not familiar with Artist Blue Adjuratum, or you're not familiar with the Cerveza and Lime. When you rub it, it smells like lime. Or the Mystic Illusion Dahlia that does really sweet yellow flowers. The goal here, yes, it is heavily planted, is that really quickly you will not see any soil between these plants. I picked a pattern, I created a pattern, and then I really, you know, just repeated it all the way down both beds are planted the exact same so that is this bed we're just going to kind of hang out wait for these to grow fill in for the first couple of weeks we are going to be very aware and vigilant making sure that they get plenty of water there's not drip lines per se in this area because we know that these plants there is drip in the bed mostly on the hydrangeas and the boxwoods but as you can see right here um, this is a great example the irrigation drip line is between the 
little line punches and close to the annuals. Once these annuals get really established, like I said, have to watch them two to three weeks. Make sure they have plenty of water, that they're not stressed. Then as this irrigation comes on, it should be enough to sustain these plants and they should be just fine. That's why we love getting our annuals in the ground as quickly as possible in the season because their roots get really, really well established and then you're not having to be out there watering as much. So that is the deal on that. The rest of the garden is on irrigation. It is all sprinklers. It is overhead. Jerry and I went back and forth trying to figure out, do we do drip? Do we do overhead? What do we do? We decided to do the overhead for the simplicity of there's so many plants and we don't want tons of the drip line running through here, especially in our annual beds. They're going to get turned over at a minimum of twice a year. Inevitably, we're going to run into all sorts of problems with them being cut all those kinds of things. We've even had in the past animals chew through the irrigation tubing to drink the water when it's really hot in the summer. So we did overhead that will completely cover everything within this part of the garden. So what we have here in the garden, uh, and yes, it is early morning, so you might see some shadows here, but there are four outer beds that are perfect little triangles that you will see in these four outer beds they are only the perennials and the shrubs. That's what we're really gonna kind of focus on today. Then on the inside, we have four beds that are roughly triangles, except for the curved on the inside, that are gonna be all annuals. Currently, there's pansies and violas in there. Yes, they look rough, I got it, I know that. But we're gonna hopefully within the next week get those four interior beds planted. Dead center, of course, is the unique stone fountain. It too is surrounded by violas and it was tulips. Obviously the tulips are done. Y'all, some of y'all are like, when are you gonna get that fountain going? It's driving me crazy. This fountain is not driving anybody more crazy than myself and my husband. He's had it running, um, so he's currently draining it right now. It's been a little finicky. Let's just say sometimes fountains can be uh, very deepish in the garden. They're a little high maintenance. They're a little particular. And so once you get it set up, you don't breathe funny. You hold your breath. You hold your tongue the right way, and you slowly tiptoe away from it to make sure that it continues to go. He had it up and running the other day, uh, but yeah, it is currently not running. He is, he figures out what kind of what the problem is, but we're going to have to take it all apart, put it back together, Y'all say a prayer for Jerry because he's about to lose his mind on the fountain. It should be up and running, hopefully, within like the next week if he doesn't lose his mind first. So that is the update on the fountain. Um, we're going to focus again on these beds. So I'm going to go to all four beds because while there are some similarities, there also are some differences. If you have been following us, you know that we, when we originally planted these beds on each of the interior corners of the perennial beds, we put a dianthus. It was, I think it was called funky fuchsia. There are, there's one or two that are still alive. They were more like the carnation type. The vast majority of them died. So we are going to replace them with paint the town magenta. I per particularly love this plant. It is um, a really strong, clearly a very strong plant. These plants were left over from last year. I have had a long success with the Paint the Town series. Um, I love the fact, honestly, that it is a that blue-green foliage, right? So it brings a completely different color to the garden. And then we have it, so I'll get these planted um, in the next, well, hopefully maybe even by this afternoon. Now, the, the placement's not the exact right because I still have root balls right here. Just know that they're gonna be spaced on the interior corner of the flower beds. In all the flower beds, we do have some plants that are repeated. One of those plants that is repeated in every single bed is the Boom Chocolata Geranium. If you're not familiar with the perennial geranium, it is very different than the annual geranium, the pinks, the reds, the whites, right, that we're used to. Boom Chocolata is um, more upright, and look at these beautiful like lavender colored flowers. Nice height to it. Uh, two of them are blooming. One's a little behind, you know. Plants can be like people. Some are more mature and advanced than others, but she's coming along, so it's fine. Again, all three of these plants are repeated in all four of the beds, but the design is different. So 
they are right here. Then, look, we have azaleas. Of course, no southern garden would be complete without an azalea. This is the Perfecto Mundo Double Pink. Um, and so you can see that beautiful baby doll pink flower on it. Um, and yes, y'all, you're going to see some weeds in here. <laughs> Real life gardening here. We are doing our best, but it is a crazy time right now. So you're gonna see some weeds and that's okay. The Perfecto Mundo Double Pink really is very, very sweet. Now I will say also that I have not had the opportunity to fertilize these plants um, because you know that we are big users of the um, Espoma products, the Tones, right? And if you're familiar with the Tones, the Tones have quite a lovely uh, tone fragrance to them, um, which is not sometimes very uh, desirable when the nursery is open and I have just gone through and completely fertilized this garden. It's, it's like you're, you walk in and you're like, why does it stink so bad? I like to put out the fertilizer right before it rains. Well, it's been a challenge to get that timing in. So while I'm telling you this is because one, I'm keeping it real. Like we all struggle with the same things of time and when can I get to this project and all this other stuff. But to also say that these plants have not received any kind of fertilizer except that biotone fertilizer when they were planted. Once they get a good shot of food, we're going to see a lot of good growth. So, um, yeah. There you go. Um, next, one of my favorite Baptisias. Baptisia is a great plant. It is a wonderful perennial that is an early spring bloomer, right? Um, I would consider this still early spring. Lemon meringue is just the softest, sweetest yellow. Does very obviously very upright stems on it, upright flowers. This is just beginning to bloom. My lemon Baptisia at the house is probably three to four times this size. Mine at the house is easily three feet, if not more, wide across. And in the height of the season, it will be three to four feet tall. Huge perennial, massive. All the flower beds have uh, Baptisia in it, but they're all different because I wanted to try to show you as many different types of Baptisia. So this is the lemon meringue, and we also have the phlox. So this is part of the luminary series. I want to say this might be opal essence. Like I said, everything has a tag on it. It is. So this is opal essence. So you can see that we'll have one, two, and then three behind it. The opal essence is going to be a nice soft pink. Will bloom later. The, the opal essence phlox and the lemon meringue are not going to bloom at the same time that's okay. When the opalescence is blooming, then my Baptisia will just have nice green foliage. So there we go. The Monarda, this is upscale red right here. Two of them look good. This one's looking sad. Definitely needs some food on there. So there we go. Gardenias, they had some winter damage, right? Um, Gardenias, classic, beautiful plant, my absolute favorite flower. Yes, so that brown that you see on the edge, those tips, that is winter damage from the cold. However, we come over here and you can see right here, we've got some nice new tender foliage. Again, once I give it a good dose of holly tone, we're gonna see some lovely growth out of it. And this one next door, um, we can really see, and I dare say that might be a bud. Flower buds are already starting, maybe, it's hard to tell, because they're not fat yet, but these may be flower buds. So we have good growth on that. I was never a fan of uh, perennial salvia. It just never did right for me. I was like, oh, I'd rather use the annual salvia. Well, <laughs> my friends, pink perfusion completely changed my mind. Keep in mind that these are, are young plants, but this is getting close to what they will look like but really, by next year, this plant will have doubled. It does very upright, just gorgeous pink flowers. Your pollinators love them. It is long blooming because that was my problem with other perennial salvias is that they didn't bloom very long. Well, the pink perfusion is a great, great long bloomer. When it's done, you can kind of see these other two started earlier. Um, when they are done blooming, gather them all up and give them a good haircut and they will reflush later on. Not quite as strong as they are right now, but they will reflush. And so there we go on that. 
in every flower bed and also every flower bed we have the pink perfusion every flower bed we have a different hydrangea here we have limelight prime panicle you know she's flushed out she's doing her thing she's growing there you go we have the princess bride Eucomus. Eucomus is that plant that my friend Kata from Walters Gardens. This is one of her favorite plants. I never got it. Um, we'll see. It's kind of like a pineapple lily when they bloom. They didn't bloom last year, but so far the foliage and the color and the texture is really cool. So we have that along with every flower bed on the outside corner has Cat's Meow Nepeta. This is going to be a little bit larger than Cat's Pajamas so far doing well for that first year um, and they are hanging in there quite nicely in this flower bed also we come around the side every flower bed has a storm cloud amsonia storm cloud was the first amsonia to bloom so it is now kind of on the downside as far as its blooms but nice big leaves and i'm going to show you strength theory here in a minute then we have the achillea look at this y'all look how happy this plant is this yarrow is doing great this is the peach sky it will bloom a little bit later, but man, you want to talk about some happy plants. They are happy. And then here we have an Indian Hawthorn. This is La Vida Moss. Every flower bed has these. No, these two, sorry, I had to think for a second. This bed and the next bed have these on the corner. These will be low and wide. Y'all look at the blooms. How sweet is that? Again, first year. Really, with your, um, your perennials and your shrubs, if you really, you have to be patient with them, my friends. Um, I always say it takes three years to really reach maturity, to really see what the plant is supposed to do. So if this plant has new growth on it and it's blooming and it's been in the garden less than nine months, I am a happy girl. Do I expect these things to be massive and be huge this season? No, that's very unrealistic. You have to give the plants time to grow, get established, get happy. Remember, the first year they sleep, they're hanging out. Their main goal, we gotta survive this year. The next year they creep. They're showing some good growth. They're so, showing some more flowers. They're getting there. And then the third year they leap. They're like, oh, we like this new house. This is great. Let's live our best life right here. So remember, sleep, creep, leap. Three years, friends. Be patient. I promise. It's hard, but we can do this. We can do hard things. Um, and then, like I said, here is every bed also has the storm cloud and it has the string theory. I think you can probably understand why this is called string theory because it has that very thread-like foliage on it, right? It looks very stringy. I particularly like the fact that they bloom at different times. It extends my season. It extends my interest in the flower bed. So your strength, your storm cloud is going to go first and then your string theory. Again, both of these are going to get nice and tall. I think it's in that two to three foot range. So there you go. Now back here in the center of all of the four beds, there is a different summerific hibiscus. This particular one is edge of night. You can see it has that dark, dark foliage. It is going to have like electric pink flowers on it. They love it hot. It is going to take some time for them to pop out. Once we get consistently hot temperatures and it loves water, so more water, it will be huge. If you're wondering, you're like, Jimmy, why in the world do you have all of this empty space right here? Well, my friends, because I read my plant tag and I know this plant. It is going to get huge. It is going to completely fill in, and if not, kind of overtake these other plants. Trust me on this, it will. <laughs> these summerifics, they're gonna be a doozy. All right, now let's walk over here. Um, and in the perennial and shrub beds, I'm not gonna put any annuals. Even this year, I'm gonna leave them alone. My annuals go in these beds, perennials and shrubs go in these beds. I'm going to fertilize them, right? We're going to have a nice regular fertilizing schedule with that slow release fertilizer. I'm going to do it now, maybe one more time in the season to really kind of push some growth. Um, and that's it. We don't use water soluble fertilizer on these. That's what you use on your flowering annuals, not your perennials and shrubs. When you, if you want to feed your perennials and shrubs, slow release fertilizer, any of the tones, the go-to is plant tone, right? Um, you can get more specific if you would like. Now, we're not gonna have to go as in-depth because a lot of these plants we've already talked about, right? So 
the cat's pajamas on the end, the pink perfusion. Notice that this pink perfusion is in a straight line on the front. This hydrangea in here is the quick fire fab. So there you go, quick fire fab. And then I have Achillea here. So we had three Achillea. Notice they're a, they're a good bit smaller. That's the Firefly Sunshine, which is a really pretty yellow. We have the um, opening act Phlox. And let's see, I'm trying to see where my tag is. I forgot what color this is, y'all. Sorry. Um, but you can see it's getting, I want to say it's maybe the pink. It is getting ready to bloom. I've got three of those and they are putting on some beautiful buds. I'm going to be very, very happy. More upright. Again, we have the three pillow talks right there. Here we have Valentine's Crush. Valentine's Crush is going to be a beautiful red, very columnar, very upright. D has green foliage, but it does have a little bit of dark in it. So there you go on that. You can see the storm cloud behind it. And then Abelias. Abelias do really well here in the south. They are a great evergreen shrub. This is Mucho Gusto Abelia. Has a really nice color to it, um, that green with that kind of that creamy white yellowish uh, variegation on it. These are going to be more low and wide. They can be like a three by three type plant. You can easily keep these pruned once a year, um, but again, here we have them on the corner to kind of solidify this end. We've got daylilies. Here is King of Ages, doing quite well, right? It's hanging out. Silver lining Artemisia, love this Artemisia. It is a very well-behaved Artemisia. It is not going to send out all these different roots. It is going to be quite nice right here. In the back beds, I do have one lower petalum in each bed. This one, is we're going to look at my dig jazz hands bold now again you will notice that it had some winter damage we planted these late in the season right um lower petalums are great southern plants but they really need time to get established i really just need to come in here and sh give it a good haircut and fertilize it and we're going to see big big growth um, in here really soon y'all look at this this is the stand by me a uh, pink Clematis, look at that oh, she's got buds this is a plant that i may be on the borderline of being too warm for but right now she is happy uh and she got a first really like you can see the color so stinking excited now you'll notice that i do not have this um trellis at all she is upright but the idea is as she continues to grow um she can then get supported off the lower petalum and then i have another baptisia right here you know this is pink lemonade um and you may be looking at it and going oh it's just yellow ha 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 but wait my friends it gets better so let's see here we go can you see those little pink so they start out this like creamy yellow and then they will age to pink hence pink lemonade right lemonade is yellow but this is pink lemonade so there you go you've got some great color on that I've got, again, my three broom chocolates. I will have my three paint the towns right here. I'll show you, this is the one funky fuchsia that actually looks halfway decent. Um, still has that silver, blue, green foliage to it. And she has got like that carnation style flower to it. But see, color wise, my gosh, great different. I mean, great as far as like color, they work together, right? So it's almost the exact same color just completely different um, bloom. Paint the town, I know works really well here. And then we have the double play doozy spireas. There's three of those right here. Love this plant, um, it's a spring bloomer. It's a repeat bloomer, it is sterile. So it will just continue to produce flowers all season long, very, very hardy. Have this at the house, love this. It will do raspberry pink flowers. So there you go. Now on the back, we have flower beds that really kind of anchor in the back of the, of the garden, the formal part of the garden. The gardens are going to continue out through here, but this is like the formal garden. Here we have, I just planted these yesterday. We haven't mulched, we haven't edged. There's still some weeds in here. We do what we can as we can, sweet friends. We have the Glitters and Glows Viburnum. This is Glitters and Glows. What Proven Winners did is 
There is a glitters viburnum and there is a glows viburnum. One's male, one's female. If you wanted to have the really sweet like blue berries at the end of the season, you'd have to plant a glitters and a glows close to each other so that they could cross pollinate. Well, sometimes that can be a little cumbersome, shall we say, especially if you only want one of the viburnums. So what they did is they combined the two. So these viburnums self-pollinate. So you don't have to worry about having a glitters and a glows or a male and a female. You can have one of these and you're totally fine. Um, so that's what's really cool. Like a four to five tall and wide and then really nice dark shiny foliage. And y'all, look at the flowers. Like the buds, look at, they look like little um, like cauliflower or broccoli heads, in my opinion. Um, so all of these are gonna be beautiful flowers. And then this fall, they're gonna have the blue berries on them. Really cool. What I did is I then went through between each one and I planted four of the Diamond Frost Euphorbias. So you can see that nice row. The reason that I wanted to do the Diamond Frost is I want my viburnums to grow, right? I want them to reach that four foot width. And so I don't want to put anything that would really crowd out the light so that they can't grow. Because if they don't have the light, then right, sun is the food for these plants. That's what encourages all that great growth. So I thought diamond frost would be really fun because it'll look like a solid airy um, white mass between the glitters and glows while giving them plenty of room to grow. Also, uh, for the wedding, because right, we're hosting a wedding, Alyssa is gonna come down, like she's gonna walk down this way and then go, the ceremony's gonna be right over here. Yes, we're gonna get it all cleaned up. Don't worry about it. It's going to be gorgeous. We have plans. It's just a little thing called time. So as she comes down, she's gonna have these beautiful, um, hopefully by then we'll get some good growth, at least some good growth on the diamond frost on this side. Then on the pond side, all of that's gonna be taken care of. And then I'm gonna have um, big massive ferns coming down. So it'll look great when she's, when she's coming down. Just trust me, trust the process people. It is a process. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. A lot of the repeating things, dianthus. Boom Chocolata, straight line. We have a Spirea, but it's a different Spirea. This is candy corn, double play candy corn. We have the silver lining Artemisia right there. We have another um, Baptisia. This is like the Sapphire Sparkles. It didn't get labeled, so this is why I was waiting on it to bloom. Um, or Blueberry Sunday, something like that. It's a blue, right? You can see that there's um, blue and purple in there as well. We have the Achillea. In a straight line this time however this is firefly diamond which is a white we have another laura petalum but this is jazz hands variegated we have of course our um, amsonia we have a daylily we have the pink clematis we have the salvias we've got the string theory and we've got the pink flocks back there on the back and of course the cat's meows pajama on no cat's meows pajamas cat's meow nepeta back there what is different here um, is we have some of the proud berry coral berry. This is a plant that I was a little afraid maybe we would be too warm for. Um, doing great. It is looking wonderful. The true test though is going to be this summer in the heat. I put them specifically in this bed because this bed gets the first shade. So any of my plants that were more tender as far as like um, needing it to have a, a break in the afternoon, I put them here. So we've got three of the proud berries right here. Beautiful, very, very I love the foliage. It's almost kind of very soft and tender. Um, so that's really cool. The Clement, uh, Summerific Hibiscus here is the Lilac Crush, still columnar. It is going to be a nice, pale lavender color. We have the new per pink bloomerang per pink lilac. Again, wanted to put it in a spot where it gets a little bit of a break in the afternoon. We're getting close to the end of the bloom cycle because you can see we've got some the older blooms right there getting close to being done. But just gorgeous. This is going to be more petite than bloomerang dark purple. I want to say in the two to three foot range. What I will do is after it finishes blooming, I'm just going to come in here and gently prune and shape the plant up so that it has a nice habit, has plenty of time to put on the new growth um, so it can have flowers again next year. 
The one thing that is different in this bed than any of the other beds is that we have yin and yang viburnum. These are evergreen viburnums, some of my absolute favorite viburnums. Um, you can see all of the new growth, right? I mean, just all that bright foliage is new. These are going to get nice and wide, definitely, and some height to them. Now, this is why you need to have, we're talking about the viburnums, glitters and glows you don't have to have a male and a female if you want the berries you're going to have to have a yin and you're going to have to have a yang i don't remember what we have we have these two on the outside are the same and then this one is in the middle is different so that is this flower bed we have a a hydrangea y'all she is on the struggle bus who is this invincible ruby invincible ruby needs some love right now i'm just going to tell you Okay, real life weeds. Um, she is struggling to come back, but she is alive. She's got some growth right here and down here. So what this tells me is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna shore her up with some land and sea. I am going to feed her. I'm going to put rose tone. I prefer the rose tone on my hydrangeas. Um, you, if you wanna do plant tone, absolutely, you totally can. This is color specific, so it's not pH dependent. Um, so you don't need to put holly tone on it to change the color. It will be a ruby color. So we're gonna have to do a little TLC with Miss Ruby right here. Uh, yeah, okay, moving on. Last flower bed, my friends. Again, nepetas, daylilies. We have, look at this. This is incredible blush. Now this is what we should, be, this is the kind of growth I'm talking about. She needs to talk to Miss Ruby over there. Um, Incredible blush is a smooth hydrangea, arborescence, guaranteed to have flowers on it. It will be a nice pale pink color to it. Uh, we have the same phlox. I want to say that's the opalescence again. We have um, the La Vida Moss in the back, storm cloud. We have the serendipity alliums in here. This is the only place we have the serendipity. They are doing quite nicely. Of course, alliums are onions, right? So these are ornamental onions, nice, pretty growth. Onions, of course, they're rabbit resistant, deer resistant. If y'all were following my struggle in the backyard, I need to put alliums everywhere. Um, really nice purple ball blooms on them. Will be just stunning. Your pollinators love them. We have the Sunjoy Citrus Barberry. I have three, two are looking good. One is on the struggle bus. Um, so we'll figure out what to do with that. I can either replace it or I can uh, try to bring it back on the mend like I was doing, gonna do with Miss Ruby. Um, but I love the citrus because look at that color. How can you not love that, right? Clearly all these need to be fertilized. The food and getting consistent water will really help. And then we have our summerific hibiscus here. This one is Holy Grail. So I did the citrus barberries here so that we would have a beautiful contrast because Holy Grail is gonna have a black foliage. I mean, black foliage with really deep red flowers on it. Will be so pretty with the citrus barberries around it. Next, we had the Princess Eucomus. Now we have the Crowning Glory. And I was there was three here. I was afraid I had lost one. Um, you can see this not quite as advanced as the Princess, but you have two here. And then I just saw, yay, look, there we go. Okay, she's not gone. She's little, but she's not gone. So there you go on that. We have another Baptisia. This one is the Vanilla Cream. So vanilla cream, nice. If you could either look at it as a, as a creamy or a very pale yellow. Um, of course, as they mature, it will be a different color to them. And then look how good that pink perfusion looks, right? Gorgeous. Azaleas again here, but this time we have, um, this is the Perfecto Mundo Orange. Now, orange is not like Clemson orange. Orange is more like a red so just keep that in mind but look at all that beautiful new growth oh gorgeous they did have some flowers on them they are as you can see they, those flowers have, have come and go have come and gone so there we go on that and we have another hydrangea this was the tiny quick fire a little itty bitty one tea tiny with the leading lady raspberry monarda here one of my favorites very kind of electric um, 
raspberry colored. So that is the update here at the gardens. Of course, we will keep you updated with the fountain, with the four beds. The four beds are going to be planted um, very similarly, but not identical. All four will not be perfectly identical. We're gonna have some variation in there. Um, so the progress continues. We will get it done. Uh, it's fun. Like I had to kind of tell myself the other day, it's like, Jenny, this is fun. You've been looking forward to this. Yes, it is a ton of work, but it is great work. And it's a lot of fun to be able to um, be out here in this beautiful space and plant gorgeous plants and to create something that people get to come and enjoy. And I, that honor is not lost on me. So I take it very seriously. And that's why I put a lot of pressure on myself is because I want for people to be able to come and enjoy this. Not that it's perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. Progress, not perfection. That is our goal here. So anyway, I hope you have been inspired. I hope you have uh, gotten some ideas, maybe found a plant that you're interested in. Any of these plants that we talked about, if you want like specific, like really great, great detail, just go to Proven Winners uh, website, provenwinners.com, type in the plant name or the type of plant, lilac. You know, if you can't remember exactly which one it is, type in lilac, uh, hydrangea, dianthus, right? Geranium, baptisia, whatever it may be. It'll come up and then you can explore, get all the nitty gritty details on each of those plants. As always, we hope you found this fun, informative and inspirational. Y'all have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.